Uh, number one, a study of 1,000 randomly selected flights of a major airline showed that 798 flights arrive on time. What's the probability that a flight arrive on time, guys? It's favorable outcomes divided by possible outcomes, and 1,000 is the denominator, and I think you know what to put in the numerator there. What about if you see this question, guys, on the test, and I said, what's the probability of flights not arriving on time? What would you do? Let's say I give you this question on Monday, an exact same question, but instead of flights arriving on time, I say flights not arriving on time. So wouldn't you just take the thousand, subtract 798 and whatever is left? Yeah, you take the thousand, subtract the 798, you will get 202. The answer will be 202 divided by a thousand. Number two, in a survey of college students, 840 said that they have cheated on an exam and 1,765 said that they have not. If one college student is selected at random, what's the probability that the student cheated on the exam? Okay, favorable outcomes divided by possible outcomes, guys. Number of students cheated, he gave, you he gave it to you already, that's a favorable. What would you put in the denominator, guys? 1,765 plus 840. Exactly. There you go. You're getting hints for this. Yeah, you need all the students because the denominator, guys, is everybody. So you have to add those two and put them in the denominator. Number three, distribution of blood types for 100 Americans is listed in the table. If one donor is selected at random, what's the probability of not selecting a person with blood type B plus. We don't want a B plus. We want everybody. 90. Plus. So you just probably, the total you have to add him. And here you have to put all the ones who don't have uh, type B plus. Yeah, I would add all of them and subtract the 10 to get that numerator. But the denominator, guys, is always everybody. Remember that. Classify the statement as an example of a classical, empirical, or subjective. If it's not based on fact, guys, or an experiment, it is a subjective probability. If I say roll a die and get a six, what's the probability of getting a six? That's not subjective. That's not intuition. I know my chance is one out of six. But if it is a guess, an educated guess, it is subjective probability. If it is based on a table, like a frequency distribution table, it's called uh, empirical probability. So I'll let you decide. Here, someone is uh, predicting, making a prediction. That's a good hint for you that the interest rate will rise during the summer. So you pick the correct answer. Number five, guys. A group of students were asked if they carry a credit card. The persons are listed below. One student selected at random. What's the probability that he or she owns a credit card? Owns a credit You First of all, this is your grand total. I make it 100 to make it easy on you guys. And I said, round your answers to three decimal places. Own a credit card, you just look for the total of people who own a credit card. Credit card carrier means own a credit card. Not a credit card uh, carrier means does not own a credit card. And guys, just follow the previous question that I showed you from the chapter three review. You're gonna see that there are questions are there already. Uh, number, so I'm gonna move on with the last two parts. Number six, tell if the events are mutually exclusive. Uh, just keep in mind that October is in the fall. Uh, so you just say yes or no for this one, whether mutually exclusive. Uh, number seven, eight guests are invited for dinner. How many ways 
they can be seated at the dinner table if the table is uh, straight with seats only on one side. So in how many ways you can seat 80 people over a rectangular table. I gave you an example, guys, last time. And let's see that I'm going to put the, give you a good hint for this. It's, I put the hint already. One, two, three, four seats, five, six, seven, eight. OK, the first person arrives, guys. How many choices does the first person have to set? He has eight choices. Eight choices. And then the next one is going to have how many choices, guys? Seven. And so on and so forth. And you know, when you are doing events at the same time, you multiply your outcomes. You don't add. You don't add eight plus seven plus six, et cetera. You multiply it and you get the answer. The last one, guys, is just to use the calculator, 9C3. How do you use a calculator? Which I'm going to demonstrate something similar to this on the calculator. Just to show you. Let's say on the exam next week, you have 15C10. How do you do that? So you just put 15 on the home screen first. Then you go to math. Let me find it. Then you go, if you forget, remember, this is a probability chapter, guys. So it's a prop. And you can see NC4 right here. And then let's say I want in how many ways I can choose 10 students from a group of 15 students. Here you go, 15C10. You can do the 9C3 the same way. And here's the answer. All right, so that should give you some very good hints on chapter three.